Hey, I'm Hannah. I'm a writer, and in this video, I'm reading my very first novel, which I wrote for NaNoWriMo as a tween. It's called Briar Manor. If you'd like to see the beginning of this story, I do have a playlist of the other videos I've made so far. But if you don't want to watch those, this book is about three friends who are breaking and entering into an abandoned spooky mansion because they want to solve the decades-old murder of twin girls and their mom, I think. If you want to read my current writing, my books are linked in the description and you can buy them in ebook, audiobook, or paperback. But anyway, let's get going. So we left off with them about to go back into the mansion for the second time after they'd been arrested very casually. It was not a big deal. Having Alexis's flashlights instead of a pen light was like having the sun instead of the moon. For some reason, being able to see more of the old mansion actually made it creepier than being in the dark. They crept from room to room, still not sure what they were searching for. They went over the rooms they'd already been in to be sure they hadn't missed anything noteworthy. They hadn't, unless you call a long dead cat and I've been like that. Oh my God, there's a dead cat. Sam, there's a dead cat. I've been like this. They eventually came across a library. This is bigger than all three of the town libraries combined, Saya exclaimed. That's pretty big. <laughs> the giant desk was sheeted, but a table in the middle of the room wasn't covered. Alexis walked up to it and picked up a book, A Tale of Two Cities. This looks so old, Alexis said. Nick snatched it from her and looked at it. Dude, this is an original printing. He carefully laid it back on the table. That, Saya said, is abnormal. She was looking up at another painted portrait. We did not spell portrait correctly. The exact same one that was in the parlor and in the secret room upstairs. It's another mystery painting. Alexis scurried up beside her and poked the cane in the picture. Nothing happened. Aw, maybe something is different about this one too, Nick suggested. They all stared at it. 20 seconds passed. Alexis sighed. Well, this is boring. Be right back. She ran from the room. I'm going to have her tested for ADHD, Saya said. She and Nick continued studying the painting. I have returned. Alexis trotted back into the room. <laughs> None of them have ever walked. Alexis trotted back into the room. She shoved them out of the way and snapped a picture of the painting. Okay, look, she held up her camera and flipped through the pictures of the three portraits. Good idea, Alexis, Saya patted her back. Alexis growled, totes rando. They sat at the table and looked at each of the pictures in turn. They all looked exactly the same to Nick, except for the one with the hole where they found the torn out key. Where they had torn out the key. I just added the word found to that sentence. Found it, oh, there it is. Saya shouted, triumphantly pointing at the camera. Look at the mother's face. Oh no. In these two, she's looking at the lens or the painter, I guess, but in this one, she's looking off to the side. <gasps> Follow her eye line to something in the room. This is gonna be very exciting. They looked at the portrait. It was true, semicolon. The woman was looking obviously to the side. Alexis pulled a chair up to the wall to reach the painting. So does her face come off? She poked at the painting. Be careful, Saya said, climbing on the chair with her. She carefully pressed around the woman's face. Nothing happened. It broke easily on the other one, didn't it? Saya asked. Alexis nodded. I have an idea. Nick picked up Saya and put her on the floor. He shoved Alexis out of the way and climbed up. He looked closely at the woman's face, then followed her line of sight. She's looking at the bookshelf there, he pointed. Knew it. Nailed it. I don't remember writing this, but I am still the same person. You think that's what it means? Alexis asked, picking herself off of the floor and brushing dust from her pants. <laughs> they just throw Alexis all the time. So I went to where Nick was pointing. Here? Yep, he jumped down and followed her. Looks exactly like all the other shelves, Saya said. Alexis pulled a book down and looked behind it. Finding nothing, she grabbed another. A giant pile of books began to grow on the floor by her feet. Five minutes later, the bookcase was empty. So much for that idea, Alexis said. Maybe the picture was in another room at some point, Saya said. Or maybe Nick is an idiot, Alexis suggested. <laughs> Nick picked up one of the books that Alexis had dropped on the floor. It had fallen open, but no one noticed. Ha! Nick shouted, holding up the open book. The pages had been hallowed. Hallowed? <laughs> The pages had been hollowed to leave space for a small wooden box. Told you. He opened it and pulled out a key. Alexis pulled the other key out of her bag and they compared them. Identical, except for the stones. Alexis's had rubies. Nick's had what looked to be topaz. This is very intriguing. What do you suppose they're for? Saya so grabbed both and held them under her flashlight. Treasure, Alexis guessed. Or a sarcophagus. Wow, I nailed that spelling. Nick supplied. I think, what, does one of those A's is supposed to be an O? Sorry, maybe the second A? <laughs> Ew, Saya gave them back their keys. Alexis started putting the books back where they were. Should we put the keys back or keep them or give them to the police? Why would we give them to the police? Nick asked. To get back on their good side, Alexis said. Hey, look at these keys we found in that house we went back into the same day we were arrested for going into said house. Saya grabbed an armload of books and pushed them on the shelf. Well, Nick said. 
I say we hang on to them and look for more. Alexis dropped the key back into her bag. Sounds good to me. Is there not gonna be a key hidden in the original painting? Why is the first one they found like the one to compare to? Alexis climbed through her bedroom window just after two o'clock in the morning. She stowed her bag and changed her clothes as quietly as she could, stopping every few seconds to listen for her mom. She climbed into bed feeling quite accomplished. If the other two had gotten back home undetected, they would be going back the next night to look for more keys, assuming there were more than the two they had already found. What they would do with them, Alexis didn't know. It just felt like whoever hid them wanted them to be discovered, else why would they leave clues pointing towards them? Alexis was lying on her stomach in the middle of her driveway, drawing with chalk. She yawned again for the 43rd time that day. She liked to keep track of that sort of thing. <laughs> she was just finishing a map of the solar system when Melvin and Shelby Jenkins walked onto her lawn. They sound like dorks. My Milky Way brings all the dorks to the yard. <laughs> Why did she call them dorks? That's what I said. God, reading this, I'm wondering, did I develop? Am I a different person now? Maybe not. Milky Way brings all the dorks to the yard. Ugh. Melvin and Shelby were her next door neighbors. They go to the weirdest private school whose hours go from noon to 6 p.m., which means they have all morning for their favorite pastime. That's not how you spell that. Annoying Alexis. You know, Shelby said, most people stop playing with chalk when they reach 10. You know, Alexis stood, most people finish 11th grade in less than three years. Shelby glared at her. Melvin ignored her. We heard about yesterday, he said, smirking. Yes, Alexis said. It was Tuesday. Very good, Marvin. It was also Alexis goes to jail day. I wasn't arrested, Alexis said. I was visiting my uncle. Melvin and Shelby glanced at each other in confusion. Didn't you know, Alexis said, my uncle is a prostitute. Pardon? I made some choices. Melvin opened his mouth to speak, then closed. It. Alexis continued. He's been doing it for a while without incident, but he was caught a couple of times in the past few weeks. He's in for four to six months. I'm glad Alexis is supportive. Your uncle is a male prostitute, Shelby asked. No, Alexis said sarcastically. He's a female prostitute. Okay. Some of this does toe a line. She bent down and scooped up her talk. Now I'm going to take a nap. Peace. That was a scene, wasn't it? <laughs> Alexis chewed on her thumb contemplatively. She'd already worn out every internet article she could find about Briar Manor, but she hadn't learned anything she didn't already know. She typed Briar Manor into her search engine again, 64 results. She scrolled through all of them, be sure she hadn't missed any, she hadn't. I can't imagine that there's only 64 results. Also, I'm very excited to read this because it seems like it's setting up for a big internet search scene and I made so much fun of Stephanie Meyer for doing that in Twilight and I'm about to eat all of my words and some crow. She rubbed her eyes, regretting the nap she'd skipped. She had finished her research paper on Briar earlier that morning, but she couldn't stop wondering about all they had been finding in the manor. Who had the keys? What did they unlock? Who killed the Smithsons? Were the keys and the murders connected? She typed in Briar Manor Smithson murders keys. <laughs> No results. Just for kicks, she typed in Briar Manor Smiths and Treasure. Four articles found. Alexis let out an excited squeal and clicked the first link. TreasureRumors.net. The legacy of the Smiths and Treasure is little spoken of, as there is no foundation for it. This is a very honest and direct website, TreasureRumors.net. In the late 1800s, a family friend had leaked a rumor that James Smithson had been part of a massive pirate ring known as the Black Ghouls. I'm obsessed. Named such because of the telltale black sails used on their ships, which made them practically invisible at night. Sam, there are pirates. 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 But no one could ever connect Smithson to the not notorious pirate gang. It was said that Smithson kept a pirate's hoard of treasure stashed away in various places, but has never been found or spoken of since his death. Alexis clicked back to the original page to look at the next article. This one was from smithsonsfamily.net. Sure. Seven teeth. <laughs> the Smithson family history dates back to the 17th century, full of scandals and betrayals, perhaps the most notable of these being the rumored pirate treasure James Smithson may have hidden. There is no real substance to these stories, but it was plausible at the time as no other explanation was ever given for the Smithson fortune. It was possible that piracy in the family started far before James Smithson's rumored career as a swashbuckling thief. Alexis gasped. James, shame on you. She scrolled to the bottom of the article and found a source. Obscure treasure stories. <laughs> book, you so hipster. Alexis wrote down the name and shut off her laptop. I did say that this book would get worse as we progressed. And that was correct so far. Alexis swung her legs from the branch she was sitting on and counted the people pouring from the school doors. Of course she's in a tree. She has to be in a tree. Where else would she be? Juniors get out at 2.30. She watched for Nick. He was always easy to spot, being roughly a kindergartner taller than everyone else. Alexis, Saya slapped her foot. There you are, Alexis climbed down. Where's Nick? Orthodontist appointment, Saya said. Oh, boo, he doesn't have braces. I have to go to the library, Saya said. Want to come with me? That's where I was headed too, Alexis said. She held up the paper with the book title written on it. I'm researching the Smithson treasure. Speaking of which, I think I left my watch in the mansion. Are you sure? Alexis asked. You're always taking it off and leaving it places. It could be anywhere. You're probably right. So the treasure, you think it actually exists? Saya asked. 
They started down the sidewalk towards the library three blocks away. Not for sure, Alexis said. It's just a rumor. The keys have to be for something, right? Why not a treasure? Saya worked on her biology project while Alexis walked through nonfiction J through O. Obscure animals, Alexis mumbled. Obscure cult. I don't think that that many book titles would start with the word obscure. Obscure dancing. Obscure gerbil serial killing. What? Obscure owls. Obscure treasure stories. Eureka. She grabbed it and sat on the floor. I would still beat Alexis up on site. As for Smithson, someone screeched from across the library. Alexis jumped to her feet and looked for the screecher. A rat. <laughs> Why is there a rat? The voice yelled. It was one of the librarians standing on a chair pointed to a bookshelf. A squirrel ran along the top and jumped to the floor. Kill it, she screamed. The squirrel scampered up another shelf and jumped on a windowsill. He's trying to get out, Sai said. The squirrel was scratching and nosing at the window. Why is there a squirrel in the library? For what reason? I'll open it. Alexis climbed up a shelf, knocking a book down as she went. The other librarian walked out of a back room. Hey, get off of there, she demanded. Just a minute. Alexis walked across the top of the bookcase to the window. Get down now. Just a minute. She reached the window and flipped the latch, shoving the window open. The squirrel hopped out and ran away. Bye, tree-dwelling rodent. Alexis waved. She climbed down, knocking over more books in her descent. I'm going to have to ask you to leave, the librarian huffed. Sure. Alexis bent down and grabbed the treasure book. Can I take this with me? What was the point of that scene? There literally wasn't one. But that is the thing about NaNoWriMo novels, is that you're trying to get 50,000 words in a month so you don't delete anything. And sometimes you just, you just try. And even if it doesn't work, you leave it. You couldn't wait until after I finished my paper to get kicked out of the library? Saya asked. That's what the internet is for, Alexis replied. Who uses libraries for actual schoolwork? People without computers, Saya said. Her dad didn't believe in useless electronics. They didn't even have a TV. He thought it helped Saya to concentrate on the more important things. Semicolon, which may have been true, as she had a 4.2 grade point average. I didn't use GPA because I just learned what grade point average was when I wrote this story. I probably also asked one of my friends what a regular GPA was and what an impressive one would be. They sat on the grass outside of the library. Saya had her notebook and biology textbooks sprawled out in front of her. Alexis opened her treasure book and found Smithson's. She read aloud to Saya. The Smithson family history dates back to the 17th. So that wasn't a typo. I just think that it's seven teeth, the 17th century, blah, blah, blah. She skipped to the next section titled The Treasure Itself. These are really bad titles. The actual treasure has never been confirmed. It may have existed at some point and has been lost or spent away or it simply never existed at all. It seems like the people who put these books together didn't believe in any of it, even the Wikipedia article or whatever she was reading earlier. And it's like, well, why are you writing about it then? Why did we put this into print? The most logical place for the hypothetical treasure to be hidden <laughs> would either be in Briar Manor, located in Leandra, Illinois, or deep within the caves of Athanasia, a small island off the coast of Ireland. Athanasia was purchased by James Smithson and is still owned by the Smithson family. <laughs> when was this book published? James Smithson disappeared on the fifth anniversary of his wife and daughter's deaths. Okay, so it was the twin girls and the mom that got killed. Never to be seen or heard from again. Alexis closed the book. That's all it says. Saya glanced up from her work. You don't actually plan to look for the treasure, do you? She asked. I'm so glad this is going to be a treasure hunting story. Of course I do, Alexis exclaimed. You don't actually plan to pass up your chance to be a treasure hunter, do you? I think you read too many adventure novels. Saya, this will be so much fun, Alexis said. Just think about it. If we find it, we'll be famous. No one even knows it exists. Exists. We'd be discovering unknown relics. We might even solve the murders while we're at it. This isn't a movie, Alexis. We could get into trouble, Sia sighed. <laughs> we already crossed the line by going back into the mansion. Well, I'm going to keep looking, Alexis said. Nick will probably come with me. Mom, this is ridiculous, Nick shouted. We've made our decision, she replied. Your father and I agree. This isn't negotiable. You leave as soon as there's an opening. Are they sending him to boarding school? Dennis had been listening silently from the doorway. I really think you guys are overreacting, he said. Dennis, stay out of this. Dennis. His mother pushed out of her chair and started clearing the table. Marcus, Nick's... Why do I always have a character named Marcus? Marcus, Nick's middle brother, spoke up. It is extreme, Mom. He'll get better on his own eventually. You don't need to send him away. You guys are acting like I'm disowning him, she huffed. It's temporary. She dropped the dishes into the sink and turned on the water. Besides, it's one of the best boarding schools in the world. Love boarding school stories. It's not a boarding school, Dennis said. It's a boot camp. It's a strict boarding school, she argued. Nick sat quietly, still trying to grasp the fact that his parents were sending him away for a whole year. His mother marched back to the table and looked at his father. His dad cleared his throat. <laughs> Why am I switching between mother, father, dad, and mom? What's going on? Just settle. Settle, babe. His dad cleared his throat. Our decision is final. Which means her decision is final. Ooh spicy. Nick stood and headed for the door. Where are you going? His mother called after him for a walk. Alexis and Saya made their way to Alexis's house and were sitting on her floor. 
Oh, they had made their way. Okay, we got the past perfect in there. Their conversation regarding the treasure continued to some extent. All I'm saying is once your adventure hero protagonist starts wearing Depends, it's time to stop making sequels. Alexis shoved the rest of her sandwich in her mouth. Alexis, that's very ageous. Alexis is by far the most problematic character in the book. I see your point, Saya agreed. The doorbell rang. An imposter, Alexis hissed. Who dares enter our realm, Saya shouted, grabbing a lightsaber from Alexis's desk. We shall dismember you, fiend. They both need to get beat up so bad. Which is weird, because Saya spent like the whole first chapter getting beat up, didn't she? Alexis, Nick is here, her mom called. Oh, Saya dropped the lightsaber and sat back on the floor. Nick walked in, looking extremely depressed. Whoa, Alexis said, who died? My inner child, he plopped down next to Alexis. Do tell, Saya propped her chin in her hands and leaned forward. My parents are sending me to an out-of-country boarding school next semester, he said. Alexis gasped. No, why? Because they thought I was a girl before I was born, Nick sighed. Now they take their revenge on the world. Are they really gonna do it? Saya asked. Yes. Nick grabbed Saya's sandwich and finished it before she could protest. No one said anything. Alexis opened her mouth to speak, but then shut it and opted to roll under her bed and lie there instead. She started wrapping her fist against the support board to the beat of We Will Rock You. Okay. Can't we change our minds? Alexis asked in an attempt at restarting the conversation. No, Nick sighed again. Mom isn't gonna budge. Saya didn't respond. Alexis stuck her head out. Where is the boarding school? I forgot, Nick said. Some island somewhere? Oh, Alexis pulled back under the bed. Some island somewhere. Is it perhaps off the coast of Ireland? Well, Nick got to his feet. In and up for round three, us against Briar Manor? He said, I'm already being sent to a different country. We might as well do more crime. Excellent. Alexis slid out and grabbed her backpack. <laughs> Excellent. We're going back into the manor, okay. Getting into the manor was a lot quicker this time around now that they had an easy access entrance. Alexis and Saya waited for Nick to climb through the window. He dropped to the ground and Alexis handed their flashlights. Shall we go for the west wing upstairs this time? Alexis asked. Let's do it, Nick started for the stairs. They were getting familiar with the mansion and could get around pretty well. They found themselves in a hallway. Which one, Saya mulled, looking at the closed doors. Eeny meeny this one. Alexis shoved through the door closest to her. I think it's a nursery, that's not how you spell that. They shone their flashlights around. This was the creepiest room yet. I love a creepy nursery. By far, the first thing you saw was a giant portrait hanging above the fireplace. It was of the twins and a large golden retriever. Oh, it's not another replica. Never mind. Little girls wore matching gowns and blank stares. Saya stepped closer. Oh, ew, they painted them without pupils. Ew. Their white eyes seemed to follow Alexis around the room. She couldn't stop looking at them. Why would they paint it like that? Saya shuddered. Maybe someone changed it recently, Alexis suggested. Think it's a clue to something? Saya asked, remembering their treasure hunt. Alexis's treasure hunt. I don't think so, Alexis said. I don't know, maybe. Nick looked around. There weren't sheets over the furniture in this room. Child-sized table and chairs sat in one corner, set with teacups and saucers. A rag doll sat propped in one of the chairs with an old teddy bear in the other. A train set, a wooden rocking horse, a half-completed puzzle. They're in there playing right now. Uh-oh. Take away the dust and cobwebs and it's like they were playing in here today, he commented. Maybe they were, Saya said spookily. Saya, you're going to end up scaring yourself more than us, Alexis laughed. She towed an old picture book. What does that say, Alexis asked, squinting at the book. Alexis picked it up and brushed the dust off of it. Uh, I think it's French, Nick. Nick looked at it. Oh, God, it's French. Noir fantôme. It means black ghosts or black ghouls, Alexis asked. The pirates. I'm so excited. Yeah, Nick said that would work too. This was James Smithson's alleged pirate gang, Alexis said excitedly. Saya looked at the book. Do you think this book is related to the pirates? I hate having excitedly or size next to Saya's name. <laughs> Do you think this book is related to the pirates? It's a start at least. Alexis dropped the book into her bag. They finished picking through the nursery, two bedrooms and a sitting room. Should we be looking for something particular? Saya asked. More paintings, I guess, Alexis said. There could be more keys. Maybe. Hey, where'd Nick go? Saya walked back into the hallway. Nick, she called. Nikolai Alice, Alexis yelled. I hate you with every fiber of my being. Nick's voice came from the end of the hall. Have you found anything? Saya asked. Yes, Nick said, because I am amazing. He gave a flourishing bow and pointed his arm towards the painting hanging at the end of the hall, another just like the three they'd already found. Woohoo, Alexis dug through her bag. Let me get my camera. No need, Nick pointed to the portrait. I already found it. The twins' hair bow is blue. It's yellow like her sister's and all the other. Ooh. Nice going, Saya said. So what does it mean? Weren't they wearing blue ribbons in the painting of the nursery? Nick asked. I think so, Alexis said. Why? I love the breakneck speed with which they decipher these clues. Maybe we have to do something with that painting to find the key. I hope it's not just touching the bow. That would be really boring. They walked back to the nursery and looked at the porch of the twins more carefully. Alexis used her magnifying glass. Oh, look, she said. They have their names written on the hems of their dresses, Emily and Margaret. See anything else? Saya prodded. 
Just the weird eye thing. Alexa straightened and dropped the magnifying glass back into her bag. I've got nothing. She turned and her backpack hit the corner of the painting. Very convenient, I'm sure. Watch out. Nick grabbed the frame and pushed it back into place. A tinkle sounded of metal hitting rock. So he didn't even have to follow a clue. It just fell from the back of it. Saya bent over and picked up the key that had fallen. That was easy enough. It was just sitting behind the painting, Alexa said. That's dreadfully uncreative. That's what I'm saying. They crowded around the key as Saya held it aloft. The stones in this one were green, probably emerald. Now we all have one. Saya put the key in her pocket. Nick's cell phone buzzed. He looked at it. It's from mom, he said. Where are you? What should I say? Tell her where you are, Alexa said. She's already sending you away. Might as well piss her off while you can. Tell her you're at ballet lessons, Saya added. Or throwing kittens into a bonfire, Alexa supplied. Studying at Alexis's house, Nick read aloud. I'll be home soon. Boring, Saya sang. Why would he be studying if he was getting sent to another school? I would not. If I were his mom, I wouldn't buy it either. We should get going. Nick put his phone back in his pocket. They made their way back to the entrance window when Saya stopped. What? Alexis asked. I have an idea, she said. Why didn't we look for a key near the first painting we found? Me and me, same page. Nick stopped too. I guess I just thought of that one as the original. Let's go try, Alexis said. They walked back to the first parlor they had found. Alexis compared the pictures on her camera again. I think it's this part, Sai pointed. See how the canvas bends here? Or it could just be damaged, I guess. Ha, Alexis snorted, found it. She pointed to the mother in the painting. She's holding a dagger. Whoa, Nick said. How do we not notice that? It's halfway behind her back, Saya pointed out. So what does that mean, Alexis asked. Not sure, Nick said, but we better get going soon. Mom's waiting. What if they have the three keys and then the fourth key is a dagger they have to stab into something? What if they have to find the dagger? Not sure, but we better get going soon. Mom's waiting. Yeah, Alexis agreed. I told mine we'd be back in two hours when we left. Saya laughed. And it doesn't matter when I get home because I'm sleeping at Alexis's house. I finally don't have a lame seven o'clock curfew and you guys both have to go home. My life. Well, Nick said, looking back to the painting, she was definitely out later than seven the first time, but I guess she'd be get arrested, so. Well, Nick said, looking back to the painting, the rest of the keys were all in the same room as the portraits. Let's look around. They spread around the room. Nick lifted sheets from furniture and peered under. Alexis looked through the display cases lining an entire wall. Saya pulled books off of the shelves, flipping through them, then put them back. Found it, Alexis shouted. She opened a glass door on the farthest display case and pulled out a dagger. Does it open? Saya asked. Nick looked at the stand the dagger was sitting on and poked at the wall behind it. This looks like a normal dagger, Alexis said, disappointed. Wait, look, it has an S carved into both sides. And a diamond on the tip of the handle, Saya exclaimed. Could the dagger be what we're looking for? I'll keep it just in case. Alexis stowed the dag in her bag. Should we let Alexis keep everything we found? Nick suggested. Saya agreed and they both handed over their keys. All right, Saya said. Let's get going before Nick's monster, I'm sorry, monster, comes looking for us. Got him. Nick hefted Alexis and Saya out of the window, then climbed out after them. Are you going to translate the picture book? Saya was asking Alexis. We can do it tonight, Alexis replied. Do you have a French-English dictionary? They have the internet. No, Alexis said, I do have the internet, though. I'm going to stop anticipating what characters would say. The last one of the wall is the fourth Indiana Jones movie. I knew that's what she was talking about with the Depends earlier. That's kind of funny. Saya said, shoving Alexis and running towards it. Nick got there first. That's not fair, Alexis complained. Your legs are as tall as us. Nick is nothing if not monstrously huge. Guys, hide, Saya hissed. She ducked behind a hedge. Alexis and Nick hid with her. What is it? Alexis whispered. She pointed to the top window. <gasps> the light was on. In Briar Manor, the shadow of a figure, it's got electricity hooked up. The shadow of a figure passed in front of the window. Saya crouched lower. Who's that? Nick whispered. Do you think they heard us inside? Alexis asked. Can they see us from here? They watched until the shadow person was away from the window. Then they scampered over the wall and ran all the way to Alexis's house. How intriguing, how spooky. I'm gonna exit the document so that I am not tempted to read ahead because we're reading this together. Let me know in a comment if you are enjoying it. And I feel like by the time we get to the end of it, we should all have a poll to see what our favorite problematic thing Alexis said was. So be looking out for that. Also, if I'm remembering correctly, I nowhere near finished this book. So we have like a chapter or two more to wrap it up. Probably there are about 50,000 words in it. So when I'm done reading it, we should write it together on Twitch. I think I'm right. I think that would be a great idea. And then maybe I can edit it and then send it out as a PDF to all y'all. I think that would be a great time. Okay, well, thanks for watching and thank you to my patrons for sponsoring this video. If you would like all kinds of behind the scenes access and entry into our Discord server and super special secret Patreon exclusive vlogs, go to patreon.com slash My camera stopped recording right whenever I was about to say, see you next week, bye. Mm -hmm.